Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia, here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law, Beatrice. Hi, everybody. We are here to wrap up the valley. Oh my God, we made it to the we end. We made it. Season one, episode 12. It has been renewed for a second season because yes. it was so lit. We enjoyed ourselves. We did. And I cannot wait to get into it. Now, before we do, we have to remind you to please hide your wife or hide your kids. This is a politically in correct podcast we say a lot of bad words we have dumb opinions and we shout them from the rooftop so if you're so sensitive you might want to find yourself another dumpster baby but if you're down to party and talk about the valley, the valley welcome to this dumpster yeah and if you are down and ready to party be sure to follow us on instagram at reality tv cringe and join us on patreon patreon.com slash reality tv cringe ad free content uncensored video podcasts and so much more and if you are watching on youtube please do not forget to like and comment and share and subscribe because truly everything you do helps us to grow the dumpster so thank, thank you, you in advance thank you now before we get into the episode itself um i always like to ask beatrice yeah whether you have a takeaway something that you left that episode thinking or feeling in your little raccoon body listen Jax taylor is like the world's biggest oh, piece of my god rap he really like, is i thought sandoval was bad but i'm like Jax is the worst because yeah. at least sandoval will like try to hide the fact that he's mm -hmm. such a piece of crap but Jax is just so like in your face about it and doesn't even realize it i think he does realize it and he doesn't care but he, oh, i he's don't been doing know. this for years he's been behaving very badly on tv he does not care I, I just can't stand him. I really can't. Like, he totally produces himself mm -hmm. in front of the camera, especially when he's around Britney. Like, he acts like, yeah, I said I'm sorry. Why aren't you okay What's with it? I'm deal? sorry. And, and or I never actually said that. And then she plays the tape and he's like, okay, well, I'm sorry. That was so good. I know. I'm so I loved glad it. that Britney finally woke the fuck up. But I'm just like, Jax, you're the worst. And now you're going to be a 45 something year old mm -hmm. loser mm -hmm. dating 20 year old chippies because they're the only ones that are going to want to date you because they're dumb. And then you're just going to die alone. Yep. He's the worst forever alone and you deserve it unless you get some help and you've been knowing that mm -hmm. you need to get help you've been knowing that you need antidepressants and therapy but you won't haul your happy ass over to the therapist's office and take care of business so you can keep your family together you are a colossal piece of shit yep agreed well my takeaway was that there was entirely too little Kristen mm. in the last half of this season first of all the run-up to the finale like all we're doing is ostracizing Kristen based on something that she retold in error but like the spirit of what she was saying was true yeah this is shit that Janet said and it just get, kept getting worse and worse and worse until she's iced out of the friend group doesn't go get to go to Big Bear which is a cast trip and neither does Zach and in these last three episodes, there wasn't nearly enough of her. Like, this is not the Janet show. Right. This is not the Jasmine show. This is certainly not the Jesse Lolly and Michelle show. We should have Jax, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. We should have Brittany. And we should have motherfucking Kristen. I agree. Where was she? I know. I thought that was kind of weird, too. And I don't know if it was because Bravo was afraid of, like, her comments from a million years ago, her for being a racist or whatever. And maybe that's why they didn't want to give her airtime. But I'm like, come on. Like, why are you going to have her on the show, but then not really have her on the show? Mm -hmm. It seemed really lame. I would have rather had more Kristen than more of Janet. Oh, God. Janet was the worst with her pregnancy oh in God. this episode. But I just feel like these are missteps from production. Agreed. Like, and you, you really shouldn't give one cast member the power to ice out other cast members if this is an ensemble cast we should all get together and film look if ariana could do it with tom sandoval if she could show up to events where tom was present then janet 
and her dumb husband Jason I know. could do the same thing. Like, who do you think you are? You're not Ariana Maddox. I know. Talk about a god complex, mm-hmm. honestly. Like Lala calling Ariana Beyonce. I'm like, no, Janet thinks she runs the show. And who are you, Janet? You're a nobody. Well, uh, you better change your tone. I am pregnant here. <laughs> Don't stress me out. Yeah, I'm pregnant. My God. god. Drama. Oh, I will not miss her. Me neither. But she's going to be on season two. Well, and hopefully, because there's no reunion, hopefully we'll yeah. get a little bit of comeuppance we will be able to address some of this stuff because it felt to me like production in a very hurried way was trying to cobble together something yep. to go against Janet with we had a montage we had people on the couch talking about her but it was not enough it yep. just was not enough for truly how hated she is in the fandom oh yeah I agree I thought that part was all rushed I wanted more of that I understand why they didn't do a reunion this season although I'm not happy about it but I understand because of the format of this last episode with the whole six months later and everything i get it but i would have loved to see janet get called out in real time from all of these people who see her fake ass bullshit because mm-hmm. wow she still has the comments limited on her instagram of course by the she way. does nobody likes janet no. so those are my thoughts that is how I feel. I actually really enjoyed this season. Me too. I thought it was going to be corny and a dud. Yeah. I thought VPR was going to be where it's at. I was so excited to get into that. And VPR ended up being a dud. Yep. And the Valley was actually really fun. I know. I kind of actually want to cover season two when it comes Me out. Too. Because I'm really interested in it. And I love that the show, like the whole premise of it was like, oh, all well, these couples are happily married living in the Valley. And then we have two divorces at the right. end. It was so good. <laughs> So perfect. And yeah. I want Jesse Lally to come back with oh his girlfriend. God. I want Michelle to yes. come back with her boyfriend. I want yes. Jackson Brittany to stay separated and him out here covert dating and yes. her potentially doing the same. Speaking of that sidebar, yes. did you see that tweet that Jax put out, I think, a couple of days ago? It was like at three in the morning. So yep. he's probably drunk, drunk on his ass. And he says something like, why don't you ask Brittany who she's been sleeping with for the last four months? Uh-huh. That's exactly what he said. And so, mm-hmm. of course, everybody's like, yeah, good for her. Yeah, I hope like, so. Like, queen. That's great. Because you've been cheating this whole entire time. Don't act like she's the fucking villain here. Like, that's what's so wild to me. He cannot take an ounce of responsibility for being such a piece of shit husband to this girl and like look i know we've been a little critical of britney throughout this whole and rightly season, so especially you you've been very critical. i don't I'm like her very much but i just after this episode i was like you know what i'm proud of britney for finally waking up i totally understand that she was trying to give him the benefit of the doubt all these years i know she's not a perfect person but like with the way that Jax just manipulates her all the time and the shit that he was saying to her behind her back like you'll have no friends if you leave me that's abusive ass 100 percent. and so i'm just i'm glad i'm like i don't care if she'd been cheating on your ass you cheated first seven years ago right on vpr or whatever well he ended up deleting that tweet and then putting out a picture of britney sleeping in his bed with Cruz. her back is to the camera and Cruz is like sleeping in a diagonal way and he's making a comment about Cruz sleeping but what he's really trying to do is allude to to Britney sleeping with him again, but other people are calling out that this is an old photo. Mm. Maybe what Jax was saying in his deleted tweet was that Britney has been sleeping with him for the last four months. No. That could also be true. No. But also maybe Britney's found somebody else. I have no idea. If that's the case, that sucks. I would hate for Britney to go back to his ass, but I'm like, I don't believe that she was sleeping with you because you won't sleep with her. Right. Allegedly. Because you think she's fat and ugly. Is that the first time that was said? Because I know Kristen said it and we had speculated. Yeah. What is Jack saying to Brittany behind closed doors to have her feeling like there's something so wrong with her body? Mm-hmm. And you were saying like he's probably calling her fat and saying all kinds of terrible things. And I'm just like, I can't believe that somebody would do that. God, sweet summer child. I know. And then Kristen came out and said that this is exactly the kind of shit that Jax has been saying to her, which is so abusive, but also yep. so sad. So, so sad. So gross. But yeah, no, Jax is, is not joking. And no. he's saying these things to repeatedly hurt Brittany. And after all these years, she was so beaten down. She was yep. just taking it and taking it and taking it. Plus, she has these strong family values to stay in a relationship and not to divorce. But finally, she got pushed to the limit. And if anybody's going to do that, it's Jax Taylor. And he's so 
unrepentant. He doesn't give a F. Like, we'll get there at the end of the episode. Yep. I'm just like, he's so unapologetic. He doesn't care about her at all. He literally doesn't care. And then he fake cries. We'll get to it. I'm just like, yeah. I can't with you, man. You're the worst. Mm-hmm. All right. well, let's go. Let's get into the episode. Let's get into it. So we start with the gays at a pottery class, a.k.a. Zach and Jasmine. Mm-hmm. This is where they kind of talk about Big Bear and how Janet was so mad and so scared okay. from Zach's Instagram post. And he was like, I was just being petty. Like, mm-hmm. I wasn't there, obviously. Why would I be in Big Bear when everybody else is? Like, this is stupid. Mm-hmm. And Jasmine's kind of talking shit about Janet, which I kind of appreciated. I appreciate that as well. But, like, bring that energy to Janet. Uh-huh. Why aren't you representing Yeah, in Big Bear at the table when everybody's talking about this shit? Because she's afraid. Because she knows Janet is going to do to her what she ends up doing at Jax's sports bar later in this episode, which is push her out of the friend group. And she's already seen that Janet apparently has the power to push Kristen out of the friend group. Mm -hmm. So she doesn't want to take on Janet. I I think Jasmine's weak. Oh, yeah, Say that shit to her face. Oh, for sure. Somebody say it to her face. I know. Why are we all scared of Janet? What is she going to do? God, I have no idea. Use her pregnancy and be yeah. like, oh, you're going to make me lose my baby. Okay, shut the fuck up. Right. I can't with her. Then we have Jackson and Brittany at their bar, and they're kind of talking about their marriage and having kids, and Jax is like dusting the sign for the bar because that's all so he cares about. So can we please talk about this? Yes. Like, do we really think that Brittany has that much input on the design or that Jax is really putting in the elbow grease to get that bar prepared for opening it. I don't know. It just feels fake to me. And Jax is always saying, well, I'm just so busy. I'm so stressed out. I have the podcast in which you meet for two hours once a week. Mm-hmm. I have my cameos. <laughs> I have this bar. And of course, I have a child. I'm like, oh. okay, well, actually, that's not a ton. Mm-mm. I don't think he's over there all the time fixing up the bar, getting it ready. Yeah, I felt like it was more real on Britney's part. Like, I felt like Britney had more of a hand in the design and some of this stuff. Well, because she talks about how she's got these other businesses. She's like a hardworking gal. She's the breadwinner ever since he what got fired What else is she doing? DPR. I know she was like, repping was it Weight Watchers or Nutrisystem oh. yeah she was a spokesperson for a period of time oh. I think it was for Weight Watchers which can be kind of lucrative I know that they have their podcast which might be popular but like what else was she doing to be the breadwinner I don't know because she's saying in this episode she's making a lot of money so mm-hmm. I'm like I don't know what you're doing but it seems like she's got more of the business savvy sense like Jax is just Jax like it's literally just his name on the bar and he's dusting the sign and acting like that's a lot of work I'm like I don't think you're doing Jack shit actually Mm -hmm. in my I think he was just being lazy and correct me if I'm wrong are we talking about just a patio conversion like this used to be Jax's sports bar used to just be an open air patio that they've covered with some sort of a tent yeah (laughs) and like put up some like wallpaper yeah but it's an outdoor area yeah that they're calling Jax's sports bar yeah it's attached to some other bar that somebody owns right I think so yeah okay it's just very interesting it's very weird to me and I wonder how lucrative that bar is now well did you see Jax in the after show when he was talking to Tom and Tom and he was saying that it was like a lottery ticket fell in his lap when they approached him and offered him the bar and again he had no buy-in he didn't have to come up with any money but the way he's talking about it is he gets 50 percent of the profit that's wild yeah what kind of just for his name that's really weird i mean like he's not that famous but i guess he is famous mm-hmm. so maybe that's why they're like yeah you'll get 50 percent of the profit because you're going to be bringing in the people but Who's going to Jax's bar for Jax? I don't know. I have heard like from people online that people have gone and it's a fun place to go. Mm. Is it more successful than something about her, like in terms of food and drinks and stuff? I don't know. Something about her has only been open for like three weeks. So (laughs) it's hard to tell. But I mean, Jax hasn't been open for a long time either. But I think there are a lot of people that are going to both. That's weird Mm -hmm. but i mean hey to each their own and then we have luke and Kristen kind of talking about michelle and her secret boyfriend this is where Kristen starts taking like some accountability for misspeaking at that big fight um several episodes ago where she's like michelle's had a boyfriend for a year and now Kristen's like just kidding it's not actually for a year she had a boyfriend a year ago yeah So she was seeing somebody and she misspoke again. Mm -hmm. But again, the spirit of what she is saying is true. Michelle had a boyfriend. Yeah. And that's the salient point. But yeah, she's fucking it up 
in the translation constantly yeah. i'm like Kristen, just shut your big fat mouth right you know what i mean like i know <laughs> you can't. mean well but she won't <laughs> oh my god just stop talking yeah and then we have um jesse and michelle also talking at their home about like their marriage and Brittany and Jax's marriage. Yeah, because here goes Jesse trying to be some kind of a marriage mentor to Jax, trying to save Jax's marriage because he can see the signs on the wall because okay. he missed them in his own marriage, mm-hmm. Jesse did. So he's trying to reach out and talk to Jax. But like he's so, again, authoritative and condescending and Jax doesn't want to hear any of it. And by the way, pay attention to your own marriage, which is falling apart at your feet. And so then they proceed to talk about their own marriage. And here again, Michelle is checked out oh my god she's so done and it's just like cringy to me to watch this because she's obviously doing this just for the show and i'm like i wish she would have just been honest in these last few moments and been like yeah i just hate you and i want to leave you (laughs) but she's not like she's kind of like skirting around it she's like yeah i'm just like no longer in love with you i wish i could get those feelings back but i don't know if i'm going to which i'm not right and then jesse sheds one single tear a glycerin tear and it's like, you know, I could almost feel bad for you if you were a good husband. But like, you've been consistently really shitty and critical. I know Michelle's a total bitch. Okay, mm-hmm. like I know she's probably not the best either. But like, Jesse, you act like you did everything to fix your marriage by, you know, doing ayahuasca with your bros for one night and Coachella. And that's it. Like, you're not doing anything to make the effort for her. And then you're crying because she's going to leave you. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I'm like, I can't have any He doesn't respect. know what to do. He doesn't have any, like, resources. He Again, he strikes me as a little boy mm. who's just trying to keep mommy around, and he doesn't really know how to do it, and he's doing it in childlike ways and ways that are, like, super quick, not substantive. Mm-hmm. And, again, she's so far gone. Even if you did go to therapy, even if you went and got a prescription for a, an antidepressant like Jax needs to do, like, it's not yeah. going to matter because the love is gone. Yeah. And that's the way women are. Like, we'll keep asking for what we want. We'll keep asking and asking. And the longer you don't give it to us, there will come a day when we will stop asking. We don't want anything from you. And we are making our way out the door. And that is where Michelle is. And I just think it's blowing him away. Yeah. I think he's holding, even in this moment, he's holding on to hope that they could do something to keep the family together. But as he says a little bit later in the episode, just three days after cameras go down for the valley, Michelle drops it like, Bye. Yeah, I'm divorcing. We have got to stop this marriage. And he felt blindsided about it. I'm like, okay, what do you mean? It's been four years of misery. Yeah. Even in this conversation, he's like, why can't we just go back to April 2020? And I'm like, four years ago? Like, you guys have been like this for this long? Like, no, it's it's done. It's been done. He thinks his arrogance is charming. Yeah, it's weird. I think he like really overinflates his own worth in a relationship and in the world totally sucks his own dick yes yeah 100 percent oh god and then we have everybody getting ready for Jax's bar to open Mm -hmm. they're gonna have the opening party and everybody's gonna be there yep janet zach jasmine Kristen, everybody's there and everybody's expecting conflict little pink crocs simon is gonna show up with his friend croc of shit boots is what zach calls (laughs) them <laughs> so good very good i love it oh so great and Kristen says you know i'm just there to support my friends i'm not gonna start any drama zach's like i'm gonna talk to janet <laughs> <laughs> i'm 100 percent starting drama i'm totally gonna start drama so janet sits down with her pregnant ass she's heavy with child heavy with here. child Heavy with child. She sits with Jasmine, I think, right? And Michelle. I can't mm-hmm. remember how it initially mm-hmm. starts. Mm-hmm. And then Zach sits down. Right. And he initially asks Janet, do you want to talk with me privately? And Janet's like, no, we can hash down right here. Right. In front of the cameras, in front of everybody. And she comes out in true Janet fashion and starts to be like, I didn't tell Jax not to invite you. I was going to invite you, but then you were very aggressive over the phone. And so I just didn't want that energy around me. So you're the problem. I don't Mm -hmm. want to be friends with you because you're toxic. Right. And so she lies because she did expect Jax to announce it to the group that Kristen and Zach were not invited. Mm -hmm. And the way Jax tells it, like after they all got together, when he made the announcement, she calls him back up and says, well, did you tell everybody that they're not coming? So she absolutely did. She is a lying liar who lies. Yep. And Zach immediately just pops off. I know. Yeah. I loved it. Literally, who do you think you are, though? I know. 
<laughs> that was so good. He was totally aggressive, intense, mm-hmm. to the point. And at first I was like, okay, you could calm down a little bit, though. Because right. you're at an opening party. I love gay rage. But I love it. I, love I it. loved it so <laughs> much. And she deserves gay rage. She totally deserves yeah. it. And of course, her lame lawyer husband comes over. He looked so lame. My God. And he's trying to be all macho. Don't talk to me. Don't talk to my wife like that. Don't say it. And I'll he's smiling. I know. Well, he's so weak, though. I know. And he's stumbling over his words. <laughs> it's not believable, Jason. I know. Like, get out of here, Carringe. Vanilla Six. Yeah. Yes. Like, I can't whip you. And Zach's just like super pissed because he's calling Janet out for being a liar. She gets up and she's like, I don't want to deal with you trashy people. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go over with my other gay friends. Uh, yeah, I need a safe space. Yes, thank you. So she goes and sits with pink Crocs and gets away from the drama that she started. That she like, started. She threw the grenade in the middle of the group. It blew up. Now they're trying to deal with it. And she's just trying to slink away to another booth and not have to hear about it. I hate yeah. that shit. Me too. When people cause the problem. And then when you have a natural reaction to the drama and the problem, they're like, um, mm, this is too toxic for me. So <laughs> I, I have know. to remove myself. I'm disengaging. No, bitch. You engaged me. Yeah. So you better sit down and hear what I have to say. Yes. And when Jason comes over and is like, don't talk to my wife like that. Zach's like, oh, my God, piss off. Just I- piss off. <laughs> You little man. He literally goes, wow. Yeah. Wow. So scared. I'm just like, I love it. It was so good. And Jasmine's starting to wake up to it. And she's realizing Janet's just such a fucking liar. And then she goes to talk to Janet because Jasmine, when she goes to sit over with pink Crocs, Croc of shit shoes over there, is starting to talk shit about Jasmine. She's like, I don't know why Jasmine's siding with Zach. And Jasmine's like, don't make me out to be the fucking enemy. Like, I'm friends with both of you. Janet doesn't live in a world where that's possible Mm -hmm. like if i'm upset then you need to come and sit with me you can't sit over there with them yep she's so immature yep i think jasmine has known this the entire time i think jasmine has been playing the friend group just to see where she can fit in the best and then jacks kind of walks by and jasmine approaches him and she's like all in a tizzy and she's like you need to talk to Janet, because Janet is the one who's saying that it was you who went and made the de- declaration that Zach couldn't come to Big Bear and blah, blah, blah. And Jack's like, OK, <laughs> let me march over there and talk to Janet, too. And he does. I did kind of appreciate him for that, too. He's like, I'm just going to go right to the source of the problem. He didn't really get to say a no, whole lot, didn't. though, before she said, um, excuse me, I'm pregnant. Yeah. Please watch that energy. Check your vibe. Vibe check. Vibe check. I am pregnant. I hated that. And of course, Michelle comes to her defense, too. She's like yelling at Zach, like, don't yell at a pregnant lady. You know what that could do? She could lose her baby. She could go into labor. And Zach's like, I don't care. (laughs) (laughs) Meanwhile, Mother Mary on a donkey heading over to Bethlehem (laughs) over weeks. I mean, she's just fine. She could take it. You can't take one like confrontation, Janet, after you instigated the entire thing i mean Miss come me with that. on and she's like about ready to pop anyway so it's not but i'm like fuck you janet right i wanted more of like a confrontation between all of them like i'm glad that zach freaked out and i'm glad that jasmine woke up to it and jacks and all this stuff and everybody's like yeah janet's the, the instigator but then that's it yeah like that's pretty no resolution much it. no resolution at all and actually nobody is talking to Kristen, so it's not like Kristen can have a conversation with janet because janet is icing her out she tries to have a conversation with michelle and mm-hmm. michelle is just staring off in the distance and Kristen is telling her don't you understand janet is the one who started all this janet is the one that said the thing in the first place and you're so pissed off at me you're so invested in being pissed off at me why yeah but she won't even have a conversation so there's no resolution no nope. it's just conflict and argument with nothing being figured out because janet is too immature to just sit down and hash it out yeah i really wonder what it's gonna look like in season two with all of this stuff because like britney seems to be friends with janet still michelle's still friends with janet so it's just like very weird and even britney at the bar is like yelling at zach to stop starting the drama because this is about them and their bar opening oh my god how many other times has jacks ruined somebody's event i don't care exactly exactly I did appreciate the screaming fight in the middle of the bar. That was great. I want more of Zach next season because he's fucking hilarious. I like him a lot. He's got great one-liners. He said, Janet is like the queen of England because she's dead to him, which I thought was so good. And we did have Janet alluding to 
having been trying to trust Zach again. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering if in this finale episode, she would actually bring up and confirm the rumor that Zach had said something terrible about her pregnancy and about her life. But she never mentions it, which Mm -hmm. I think is interesting. She's mentioned it after the fact on social media. But like, there's no conversation. So Zach can't really even defend himself. Yeah, because it's a lie. I think she's totally making it up, Mm. honestly. I do too. Because, I mean, Zach seems very sassy. He seems kind of mean girl too. But I don't think he would have said something that vile. Like Janet said, he said to her, I hope like uh, you lose your baby or something like that, which I'm just like, that's... Well, although in this scene at Jax's sports bar, somebody says like, you got to be careful because she could lose her baby or something. I don't care. I don't care. (laughs) Yeah. So, so I mean, I can see a world where he might maybe. have said something vindictive, but at the same time, Janet, don't dish it if you can't take it. Well, and stop using your pregnancy as an excuse. Yeah, as a see, shield. Now in season two, now that they've had their baby and everything, I'm like, okay, what excuse are you going to use now? There will be no excuse and exactly. there's really nowhere to hide. Nope, not at all. Yeah. And Jason, I'm wondering how much are you going to be able to defend? Because right. at some point you're going to have to realize that your wife's fucking crazy. Yeah. He doesn't have a backbone. None. Like he's not standing up to her and he is acting as a shield in this particular instance. So like, where's your character though? Right. Where's your integrity? Because if my husband is acting a fool, like, if, and if he's wrong in a situation, I will stand with him in front of other people but you better believe i am talking to my husband behind oh, yeah. closed doors and like what the fuck are you doing like calm the fuck down <laughs> right and or pulling him away from something and saying you need to settle down or like what the fuck are you doing right it doesn't seem that jason does any of that so mm-hmm. janet just goes unchecked with all of her bullshit oh for sure mm-hmm. and she loves it too like i think it brings her joy to cause this much mayhem oh yeah 100 percent. she loves the chaos because that's all she has in her life really Honestly, because what is her husband lawyer doing? Like, he's vanilla. He's a bore. He's boring. He's working on workers' comp case. Uh, Exactly. For the corporations, by the way. He's not representing the workers. He's working for the corporations. Exactly. To deny claims to workers. Yes. So, I just don't like them. I don't either. So, now it's six months later, and all of the couples have basically like divorced besides, you know, Janet and them and stuff and like Nia that. And yeah, Danny. And Nia and right. Danny. But we didn't see much of them in this no, episode either. Kind of just in the background. Again, mm-hmm. you're going to have to step up your messy game if you want to make an impact on season two of The Valley. But then again, to make an impact, you've got to be messy. And that would be sad because I love them and I want them to work out. But Me they're too. boring. They're very boring. Literally, their only point of contention is just whether or not they're going to move to Santa Clarita. Yeah. Like that's Valencia. It. Right. Nobody <laughs> cares. Like, I'm super bored. No one cares. You're boring. But yeah, so we get right into like the Jackson Brittany headlines from TMZ. She's... And also the Jesse and Michelle headlines. Yep. Which I was very happy that they addressed in this season because these headlines came out at the beginning of the season. So everybody's watching the show like knowing they're mm-hmm. all going to leave each other. So I'm glad that they addressed it. We kind of start with like TMZ headlines with Jackson Brittany. Right. And Brittany saying she moved out. She's renting an Airbnb because Jax refused to leave their house. Right. Like what do you think about shit? that? Because, I mean, everybody has an opinion about Tom Sandoval not leaving the house and mm-hmm. allowing Ariana Maddox to, like, make a good transition out of the relationship. He didn't do that. And then Jax refused to get out of the house and go find another place. The difference to me is that there's a child involved. Yeah. And that you want to provide a stable home that is familiar and comforting to your child, especially if you have a child with special needs. Uh Uh-huh. And the fact that Jax is okay displacing his wife to another home, even if it's nearby, and I think it's in the same neighborhood and or like down the street, like very close. Nonetheless, like the fact that you would let the mother of your child and your little baby go to some other house while you just lorded over like a king in that house, which it sounds like she ended up contributing more to than he did because he spent a lot of years being broke since VPR, Uh is just the pinnacle of ego and awfulness. And I hate him so much. I hate him too. I'm like, look, I don't think that there should be like a blanket rule, like all the time the men should leave the house, right? But in this instance, I'm like, Jax, what the fuck? You're going to make her move out and rent an Airbnb while you sit there 
in your house that she pays for like fuck you dude right so she's paying for her airbnb and she's also paying for her share of the mortgage yep. yeah how is that fair the mother of your child mm-hmm. again like she says just points out to his selfishness and how much of a piece of shit he is same thing with jesse lolly makes michelle leave their house mm-hmm. with their child so she had to go get a new house all new furniture all new everything while he sits at his house by chateau marmol well Maybe the difference there is that she really is the one who is initiating the divorce and he was the one who wanted to stay in the marriage. But at the same time, I think Jax wanted to stay in the marriage as well. Yeah. And it's Brittany who is initiating a separation. It, it feels different, though, because I think Brittany would love to reconcile and fix everything and get back together with Jax. What I think Brittany is looking for is is some evidence that he's attempting to change and get better. Yep. And if he were to do that, I think it would take the smallest thing to allow her to come back into the home versus Michelle. She doesn't care what Jesse does. Nope. There is no theory in the world under which she would ever find him attractive and want to be with him. So she is gone, 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 gone. Yes. Whereas Brittany is not necessarily that. Right. And it seems like Michelle kind of wanted to just leave and move yeah. out. So, I mean, she kind of phrases it in solidarity with Brittany. She's like, yeah, like he made me move out. But I'm like, well, you bought furniture and like got your own place. So, I mean, it seems like you wanted to leave and that's fine. Like, You do you, queen. That's cool. But in both situations, I think it's just kind of shitty of the men, though, Mm -hmm. to just let their wives do that. I'm like, you should have just left and got your own bachelor pad. I do think there's some kind of a legal ramification, though, if you're separating and or divorcing, like the person who abandons the marital home then has less claim over it. Oh, I don't know. So I'm wondering if that's why Jax doesn't want to leave or if he's just being a dick. And he's like, well, if you want to go, then you go. I'm, I'm not stopping you. I think Jax is being a dick. Me too. And even the way he's describing it in his talking heads, he's like, yeah, we're on a break. Like, no, she's broken up with you. She's fucking done. You're not on a break like Ross from Friends. Like, you guys are over. She's not going to come back. I don't think Jax, in this moment that we're seeing six months out, I don't think Jax realizes that. I don't think that he can conceive in his pea brain that Brittany, of all people, would leave him the wonderful and the studly Jax Taylor. Yeah. Like, he thinks that she will always be around because she can't get better than him. Yep. And that is probably something that he has told to her many, many times. And we hear in the conversation conversation when Kristen and Zach come over to to visit with Brittany like all of these things that Jax has been saying like you mentioned like you don't have any friends you don't have any family nobody's going to want to hang out with you I'm the reason you're even relevant a little bit like the abusive toxic isolating abuser kind of shit he's been saying to her for all of these years he's even doing like pr for himself i think in this episode when he has that conversation with jason at the bar which felt very forced staged because jason's like yeah so what's going on with your separation and Jax is like yeah i got therapy scheduled and i'm gonna get on some meds i just need to get myself right you know like i'm just like triggered by all this stuff and like i want it to be better for me and Brittany. i don't want us to fight all the time because i love her and she's my wife so that's all for the cameras exactly it is all just a lie which Brittany ends up calling out I know. and it ends up being true like he's yep. like yeah i called i made an appointment for therapy and yeah i'm gonna go to the doctor and see if i need some meds and then it was too far away and he never went and he never he went. doesn't care no nope, he doesn't and all he's used to is saying what he thinks are the right things to like quell Brittany and her Kentucky rage and just be like, yeah, babe, I'm going to go to therapy. I'm sorry for being mean. And then he just goes back to the same bullshit Mm -hmm. after a few months. Like he probably is the type of guy that just like puts on this act and he's like, yeah, like I'll be okay. I I I will treat you better. I love you, whatever. And then just goes right back to the same. Yeah, but I don't even think He's been putting on that act with Brittany because when we get to this scene with them having the final conversation, he is indignant. I know. He's just like, well, I mean, you're the one who left. So what do you want me to do? Like, I I mean, are we separated? I mean, it's been kind of nice. Yeah. He's acting like he does not care one whit that she has left. Yeah. And then he says stupid shit like, well, I want you to come back home. No, he doesn't. No, you don't. You don't like her at all. You think she's ugly. Mm -hmm. You don't like being around her. You're annoyed with her. You criticize everything that she does. And yet you want her back. 
-hmm. again like i said a few episodes ago i think it's all just about the image to like portray this idea that he's got his shit together when he really doesn't jacks and britney are like the typical girl falls for bad boy trope like oh i think i can fix him and maybe i'm the girl that'll change him and it's just been years and years of britney thinking like well maybe if i love him enough he'll change like maybe we can grow and maybe Maybe if i get boobs and maybe if i get plastic surgery and maybe if i am the spokesperson for weight watchers maybe he will love me again right i think i'm pretty again and what's such a shame is that britney has defended him time and time again she stood up for enabled him. him she's taken him back like she says all these times that he has humiliated her and treated her like crap and yet he can't even treat her decently. Like you have this girl who's willing to pull it up with all of your bullshit for nine years and you can't even be nice. You can't even fake it. he's never had to. Like he has been able to get away with this with Brittany the entire time. Right. And so maybe he's a little shocked that she's actually sticking to her guns because she's never done it before. He's not going to really get the message unless she like fucking files for divorce and takes his son away. Which it seems like she's going to do. I think she needs to do it. Yeah. I'm worried that this is all for season two. Uh, I'm worried that some of this is just orchestrated, that there can be another storyline. But that's what I was thinking. But when we get to the last scene with Brittany, there is something that's different about her. Yeah. The way that she's carrying herself, the way that she's anticipating the bullshit that Jax is going to say because Jax is always saying the same bullshit. And her counterpoints, I thought, oh, you this is measured and you've thought about this and you're sticking to your guns. So something is a bit different. That's what I'm thinking. But at the same time, I feel like she's this close to going back to Jax Taylor. I think Jax Taylor is her person. Yeah. I think they are soulmates, toxic soulmates. And I think if he gives her even the slightest of reasons to give him a chance, she's going to take it, unfortunately. And she kind of alludes to that in her conversation with Kristen and was it Zach? I can't remember. Yep. Kristen and Zach when they when come, they to come visit. over and she's at the house like picking up some more shit to bring back to the Airbnb that she has to rent because Jax won't leave the house and she's talking with them and they're like this feels different like this this house feels weird you feel different like this is over and Brittany's like yeah I've finally woken up to like all of the years of mistreatment and abuse and all of this shit but then Kristen I think asks her like are you done like for real for real no cap you're done and she's like well I feel like I'm right at the tipping point Mm -hmm. and that's where I'm like oh Mm -hmm. come on Brittany but at the same time you don't want somebody to throw away their marriage of several years like on a whim especially when there's a child so I can understand like why she would be watchful and why she would be reticent and why she's just trying to see what Jax is going to do but like Based on the final conversation, like the conversation that happens right after this one with Kristen and Zach, I'm just like, oh, girl, he's never going to change. Mm -mm. And hopefully in that conversation, she got the memo. I think she did, especially when she made that comment about therapy, because she's like on the talking head and she's like, I asked him to get therapy. And then, of course, he tells me he got therapy or he made an appointment for it the day prior to us filming. Mm -hmm. But I bet you money he didn't go. And then it pans to Jackson. He's like, yeah, I didn't go. It was too far, like you had said earlier. And so it's like, of course, you just say these things to appease Brittany. I loved that she called him out on camera to his face as opposed to in an interstitial on the couch. She's like, when did you make that appointment? appointment oh yesterday when the cameras picked back up i guarantee you're not gonna go that was so good and you could just see him sitting there she's got your number Jax. oh and i love a britney who's gonna start telling the truth me too i can see a situation for season two where we have a newly single britney back on the scene and Jax cannot believe she actually did go all the way in divorces ass and now she's dating and there's another man around Cruz. Yes. That I think is going to make Jax Taylor crazy and not necessarily because he loves Brittany, not necessarily because he's attracted to her and wants her and she's the only woman for him, but because he regards Brittany as his yep. and his possession. It's all control. So the moment there's another dude around her, He's going to have a problem with that. Oh, 1000%. And I wouldn't be surprised if he's the type of guy that doesn't want to sign papers and gets a lawyer and like makes it super difficult to go through with the divorce and he just drags it out just because he wants to piss her off because she's fucking done. I really hope she doesn't go back to him. I think she will. I really fucking hope not. Oh my God. What do you guys think? 
please comment below your fake psychic <laughs> prediction. I don't know. I just, I hope she's straight up done and she's empowered to be her own self because I'm like, I'm sure you can find a nice man that's going to love your body, yaddy, yaddy, and actually give you what you need and like be a good guy to cruise and like treat you better because. And if you're making all the money that you say that you're exactly. making, like, why do we want Jax Taylor in our lives? We don't honey? need him. He's a washed up loser. Can we bop on over to Jesse and Michelle and their yes. final conversation? Because I thought that was interesting. So we're six months later. Yes. And again, three days after cameras were down for the first filming Michelle told Jesse, it's over, and she has left. She's living somewhere else. Um, she's with Isabella, I guess, 50-50. It's mm -hmm. a pretty clean-cut custody agreement at this time. So she's coming over to the Chateau Marmont house to talk to Jesse about some final things. Mm -hmm. He seems different. Uh-huh. I'm wondering, I mean, he seems, is he angry, or is he accepting of the way that it is? I think his ego's bruised okay. because he's got this beautiful woman who left his dumb dopey ass. Mm -hmm. And he says in his interstitials, he was blindsided by the fact that she wanted to leave him. And I'm like, that's a crock of shit. How could you be blindsided when everybody watching could see it coming from a mile away and we don't even know y'all? Well, and you've been saying the last three episodes, like I'm coming to the realization that she doesn't want to be married to me anymore. So why are you blindsided? Why would she want to stay with you if she fucking hates you? She's closing her eyes while you guys are having sex because she hates it so much. The whole two seconds of it. It's just like so stupid. And I don't feel bad for him at all. Because again, if you were a better man, you could have kept her. What I loved is that you could kind of see that he was defaulting to their old relationship mechanics, trying to dictate the terms in yes. which like we're going to take care of the dog and like, do you have the dog food and Isabella and the business? And she's like, don't worry about it. <laughs> like, of course, I have the dog food, Jesse. I mean, yeah, we have separate lives. I've got it covered. No problem. Yeah. And when he starts giving her shit about the business, mm -hmm. because it sounded like and I was listening and he didn't get to finish this thought. It sounded like money was deposited into an account and then taken out by her yes and i'm like what was that about because we never like got the tail end of that conversation i know it sounded very messy because they she gave him the papers to sign for the divorce he doesn't want to sign it yet because i think in the papers of their divorce there's probably something in there about the business and she's like what it's not complicated we're not doing business together anymore so they're both real estate agents but i'm like how does that work like is she trying to take some of his clients like well is she i think they the worked money? together their business was a partnership and yeah. so what she wants is to make a list of like all the previous clients transactions mm -hmm. the current ones and have it organized and he's like wait we don't need a list you always want lists and she's like no I want this shit in writing no that is exactly what I want and he's like okay yeah so she's not taking his bullshit anymore no she's I kind not. of loved to see it I loved it too but I just wonder if there's some shady parts mm -hmm. on her like if she's doing some stuff with the money that we don't know about like they're po totally also a match made in heaven in terms of like toxicity and shadiness like I feel like there's some crazy stuff and the fact that they have to hire a mediator to like actually get the paperwork signed and they're probably gonna have lawyers like it's gonna be messy well wait 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 because the mediator is the better choice to go with and in fact for my second marriage i had a mediator oh you did i didn't have an actual attorney an, an oh, attorney my well, parents did the mediator was an attorney and so as long as the mediator could broker the deal if you will and on all of the terms of the divorce then we didn't need to hire our own attorneys mm. so like if you have a relationship like that where you can trust the other person and you're trying to split amicably a mediator can work out well mm -hmm. but because there's it sounds like there's some messy stuff going on mm -hmm. i wouldn't be surprised if they ended up retaining their own counsel i wonder she just wants out oh yeah she's done she's like just sign the papers i want to get divorced he's like, yeah but no because this is unclear and i don't know if i want to do that and she's like why just sign them and he's being so condescending because he's like well you don't think about everything and i'm like oh my god fuck you yeah Again, another 40-something-year-old washed-up loser that's going to be single forever. Because and dictating terms to a woman who exactly. 
Has your number, honey. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I did like that energy from Michelle, though. I did like that she was giving it right back to yep. him and she was being Not harsh. taking his bullshit. I loved it. You can kind of see like how he has conducted their relationship and conversations in the past. And probably she's just cowed to him and let him do whatever. But now she's like, I don't got to do that anymore. Bye. Oh, fuck you. Yep. Fuck you. And we have to talk about, let's get back to the conversation with Kristen and Zach and Brittany when they go over to visit Brittany and they're talking about Jax and... Again, they're taking Brittany's temperature about like, is this is this done? But we also want to talk about Kristen. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. this is where it is revealed that Kristen did get pregnant. Mm -hmm. As we had discussed, I guess they started trying in September. Mm -hmm. And then by October, she was pregnant. And then she, I think, went to nine weeks. And then unfortunately, she did miscarry. And yeah. uh, she was still very emotional about that and i think they're just now going to start trying again so that would have been like late winter or early spring of this year that yeah. they're trying again to have a baby and i just i felt bad for her i, I felt, felt bad sad. for her too and i thought that was kind of like crazy that they just kind of blitz through that like mm -hmm. very quick i'm like i would have liked to see more about again Kristen's Kristen story. representation like i want to be a part of this storyline right. i want to know more like i wonder if we'll get to see more of that in season two like especially with all the divorce drama and stuff like i want to see less of janet and jason yep and less of danny and nia honestly because i'm like kind I don't, of i mean i know you guys are great but i don't want you to get sucked into the toxicity of and you're boring reality tv yeah like go move to santa clarita and live your boring Suburban Lovely, life. Wonderful life. I, lo I love Off it. Off of television. You. Yes. Yeah. We should have had more of the context and some information if Kristen wanted to talk about it. I don't sure. even know if she wanted to. Maybe but she like, didn't. I care about Kristen. Like, Me too. I like Kristen. I have a soft spot for Kristen. And I, again, what we started talking about at the top of this pod episode, like, I resent the fact that she's being kind of blotted out <laughs> yep. of the valley. Like, you need Kristen. Like, if you. Don't let Kristen be at the forefront of this cast. I'm snoring. I know. I don't care. She's a main character. Nobody else there besides Jax and maybe Brittany are main characters. So she needs to be featured more oh, in for season sure. two. And to her credit, I know she messes things up when she blurts things out of her big fat mouth. But she like at least is the only friend group or like the only one besides J Zach that actually calls people out on their bullshit, mm -hmm. which I kind of appreciate it. I mean, she was clocking Janet from day fucking one and everybody else thought she was crazy. And then now it's episode 12. People mm -hmm. are starting to realize that Janet's the master manipulator of the whole group. And so I don't know. I, I justice for Kristen. Furthermore, she's the only one who apologizes. Furthermore, she's the only one who accepts responsibility yep. for getting it wrong and then goes to the person directly and apologizes and tries to make it right, not just once, but repeatedly. Yep. And it doesn't matter what she does or how many times she apologizes. These people are invested in misunderstanding her and not forgiving her. Yep. 100%. Which, which is sad. This is why she needs to move to Colorado with Luke and leave all these L.A. fake people behind. Just Are we going to life. be as interested in the Valley if Kristen's not on it? I well, mean, I, I need Kristen to be on it. I mean, yeah, I need Kristen to be on it. But I mean, Zach's funny. Yeah. I like him a lot. Even Jax and Brittany. I mean, I know they're so toxic, but I'm like, I would watch their divorce issues. Oh, yeah. Same thing with Jesse and Michelle, even yes. though I hate them both. I would love to watch their messy ass divorce and them dating. And if she's dating Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> <laughs> I she's mean, not. I he know. lives in Tel Aviv. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, so I will be looking forward to season two. And yeah. again, I thought this was like a great first season. I was entertained. A new reality TV show. Like, oh, yeah. There's so many good tidbits here, good relationships, good conflicts, lots of drama. Yes. Lots of drama for your mom. I'm here for it. So we will pick it up when it comes back, probably around the same time next year. Yeah. January or so. The raccoons are on it. We are on We're it. We're in the valley, in the dumpsters. Yes. You better believe it. Any final thoughts about the crew? No. And the valet? Other than that, I mean, this was a good season. Mm -hmm. And I liked the length of the season too. It didn't drag on. Right. 12 episodes so it's That's perfect perfect, perfect. It's wind it down we don't but need 18 episodes we don't need to drag the shit out right. we do need a reunion i think they get the message though so yes. next time we i'm sure we'll have one yes but yeah i thought it was a perfect nice little mm, mm -hmm. bit of trash for us 
during the spring. Oh, yeah, girl. All right. So is there anything else that we need to say to these beautiful raccoons before we get out of here, Beatrice? Well, if you love our podcast, I sure hope you go to your favorite podcast platform and leave us a glowing five-star review. Ah! It really helps us grow the pod and get more famous. So we really appreciate it. Thank you. We will be back next week to talk Sister Wives Rewind. Yeah. And also we are digging into unexpected Am I Pregante? Yeah. Preganon? Preganon. Na, 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 na. <laughs> um, we're with those little hoes, those little teen hoes. Yes, little Having teen some fun with us, so definitely join us. Yeah. Um, and until then, please do not forget that we have nothing but love for you. And peace out. Bye. Bye.